this is the Provoke Prawn, and here I'm comparing the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro with the Logitech G502X and the X Plus as well. Now these are two really interesting mice, both very comparable. I originally compared the Basilisk Ultimate with the Logitech G502 Lightspeed, and those were quite similar. And now it seems like Razer and Logitech have done similar things again. Both these mice, for example, now have optical switches, USB-C charging, and obviously very similar ergonomic designs with a nice thumb rest, multiple action buttons, sniper button on the front to drop you into a lower DPI, free spinning wheels, and much more. So in this video, I'm going to show you the specs, features, and highlights of each mice, talk about my feelings about them, and what I like and don't like. Also link to the videos I reviewed both these mice, as well as the white G502X Plus that you can see here. So you can find out more about them, and see, including seeing the software and other highlights. And here I want to talk about some of the things of interest. Now, the Logitech obviously doesn't have RGB as standard, which you can see here, but there are some other things of interest. You'll notice very similar designs here, although Razer has the advantage under the hood in a number of ways. For example, the Basilisk V3 Pro has both Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity. It also has higher specs, so it has 30,000 max DPI, 750 max IPS, 70 G's max acceleration, but it only has 10 or 11 programmable buttons, whereas the Logitech has 13, because it has those two extra ones that you'll see from these shots. If you put them side by side, though, you'll notice a lot of similarities in the ergonomic shape of them, the angry design, the front DPI button, PTFE feet, even on the underside, you'll see there's a little dock with a similar sort of design. It can pop off the housing. Now, one of the things of interest to the Basilisk V3 Pro is that that dock can be taken off so the little housing can be taken off. And if you buy the fancier version of this or buy additional purchases, you can get a little swappable cover for that, which then allows for Qi charging. So you can use it with a Qi charging mat or with Razer's own magnetic dock. So you can pay for a little dock where you can just pop this thing on and it will sit there and just charge up, which then obviously means you don't have to worry about plugging it in. As the standard, the base model, which you can see here, doesn't come with that, sadly. It's an extra purchase, but it's something to bear in mind. You'll notice, obviously, also 13 RGB lighting zones. It gives you this nice RGB glow around the bottom and outside, as well as on the logo and on the mouse wheel. Some interesting highlights. Quite a bit different to the Basilisk Ultimate, though, which had a little adjustable resistance wheel on the underside. Now, Razer's changed the way that wheel works, which is pretty interesting, but we'll get to that in a minute. The G502X similarly has a similar underside, although you notice there's only one power button under here. There's no button to switch to Bluetooth because the Logitech mouse doesn't have that. What it does have, though, because there's no RGB lighting, is up to 140 hours of battery life. That's versus the 90 on the Basilisk V3 Pro. And that's pretty interesting because it means it will last longer. Also really large PTFE areas and ever so slightly different design with those extra buttons on the left hand side of the main mouse buttons. What you'll see at the front as well as a little LED indicator which not only lets you know when you're changing DPI levels, but also when the mouse is running low on charge. Now here you can see the X Plus, but the difference between those and the standard black one that I showed you is just the RGB lighting. But what's interesting is both will work with Logitech's PowerPlay system. If you buy the PowerPlay mouse mat, which you can see here, you can plug that in, get the little puck that's included with that, stick that on the bottom of the mouse instead, and now you have a mouse that is constantly charged through the mat. So you don't need to worry about plugging it in. You can just use it on there without any fuss. Now it's not a very big mat and it is an additional purchase, again, similar to Razer's, but what it means is both of these have that option for basically wireless charging without any worry about having to plug in when it starts to run low, which is really nice. They do, however, both have USB-C, so they're really easy to plug in when you need to. Now these mice are really nice for a number of reasons, and I really like the shape and the way they fit in the hand. Obviously, you've got textured grip on either side. If you look at the super light from Logitech, you'll see a significant difference in the sort of shape and the overall fit and the way it will slope into your hand and the comfort of it. It's a very nice mouse, but only if you're right-handed. Obviously, if you're lefty, you probably want to go for the super light, to be honest, although you've still got those thumb buttons on the side. 
it's a bit more symmetrical and probably more comfortable. Just a quick demonstration of the size of my hand and the fit of both mice, just so you can get a view of what that's like. But what I find is it's a really nice fit for my hand, very comfortable, keeps most of your hand off the desk with that thumb rest and also just fits really well. The Basilisk V3 Pro has this sort of matte finish to it, which means it's really easy to grip onto, but both of them have these textured grips on the side and easy access buttons. Now I will say that I did press the side buttons next to the left mouse button on the G502 a bit too much, a bit too easy to press, but they are still really comfortable and it's nice to have access to a lot of hardware buttons like that. You also obviously have the removable front button. On the Logitech mouse, you have this DPI button, which basically drops you into a low beat DPI. You can take that off, you can turn it around so it faces the other direction, or you can remove it entirely and replace the cap over there so you can get rid of it if you don't want to. This is something you sadly can't do with the Razer mouse, but it's a nice sort of enhancement or adjustment that you can make to the Logitech so you can change the fit of it or just the comfort or change the logic of how it works. Now both mice have access to loads of different programmability within the software so you can customize the settings a lot. So it's worth diving into that. You've got five onboard profiles, for example, for the Logitech mouse. And with the Razer mouse, you can use HyperShift, where you can assign one button to HyperShift, and then you can get a secondary layer of actions, so loads of different customization in there and tweaks that you can do to it. And that's pretty useful and handy as well. And lots of flexibility around there. So it's nice to have a mass of buttons that you can use. Now, it's worth noting that neither of them is particularly light. You can see that the Basilisk V3 Pro comes in around 113 grams and the Logitech just over 100. So they're not super lightweight mice. But I didn't find that obnoxious. They're not so heavy that moving from a lightweight mouse, and I have used a lot of lightweight mice in the last few years, to this wasn't a struggle or a problem. Have you seen what is a lot of similar features in terms of the sort of the shapes and specs of them? As I said earlier, both now have optical switches. So the Logitech has these new light force switches, which is a sort of middle ground between mechanical and optical switches. So they still give you that really nice click feedback, but they also have that light beam activation, which means they're really accurate and they'll last longer. Now, what you'll also see is this spinning wheel. So Logitech for ages with the G502 had this basically infinite spinning wheel. You could press a button and you could just get the mouse wheel to spin. Razer has something similar, but in my mind, it's not quite as good, but it is interesting and it's worth talking about because Razer has an intelligent system to it now where you can go into the Synapse software and you can turn on a setting where you if you start to scroll and you start to scroll really fast the mouse will automatically switch into the free spin mode so that it will just have this smooth action as standard you can press the button behind the mouse wheel and turn it into a more tactile mode where it will just make a noise and give you some feedback when you're scrolling and then press it again and it will go into the free spin mode which is more like what logitech has with it where you just have to press a button first and then spin infinitely or press it again for the tactile response. But you can do it at a software level, and then the faster you spin, suddenly it will switch into the other mode, then you slow down again, it will go to the other, which is pretty interesting and quite unusual. However, I will say that I think the G502X Lightspeed has the nicer mouse wheel because it's got a metal finish of in it, and it feels like it will spin for longer, which is a small point, but it just feels a bit more premium in that way. But overall, they're both very nice mice. I think I probably prefer the Logitech, if I'm honest. It's just a bit better in terms of premium design. I think it will last longer in terms of battery life. And it's just a nicer overall finish, which is probably a bit more affordable. Uh, the Basilisk Ultimate at the top end is very expensive, but then you do have the wireless charging capabilities with it. It is, however, specs-wise, the better option so the more powerful mouse potentially. So if you're really serious about your mice and you want the top end, then the Razer may be the one to go for. They both have left and right click in the mouse wheel, so loads of functionality there and lots to like about both of them. Don't forget to check out the reviews to find out more. And here's a quick sound test so you can hear the difference between the switches and more. Stick around the end to support the channel by pleasing the algorithm gods. Thanks for watching.
You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.